All right, let's go ahead and do the product roll uh, and the proof of it. Um, and the examples will be in the next few videos, so there won't be any examples in this video. Uh, so if you're just looking for examples, go ahead and skip ahead to the next one. Um, but this video is going to introduce the product rule and give the proof for it. So the product rule says uh, the derivative with respect to x of f times g equals uh, derivative of f times g plus f times the derivative of g. So in other words, uh, derivative, uh, if you want to take a derivative of a product of two things, then that's going to be uh, derivative of the first times the second plus the first times the derivative of the second. All right. So um, we got to be very careful because uh, unfortunately, you know, the derivative of f times g is not the same thing as uh, f prime times g prime. So in other words, if you want to take the derivative of two things being multiplied, um, don't multiply their derivatives. Okay, that's not going to work out. Uh, and we'll point that out in the examples in the next few videos. But anyway, <clears throat> for now, let's just go ahead and prove uh, the product rule here. So let's uh, zoom back out a little bit. Okay. So uh, this is kind of a doozy, but uh, you'll bear with me just for a few minutes, I guess. Um, it's kind of interesting. So let's go ahead and do that. So we want ddx <clears throat> of f of x g of x. So just like we kind of been doing, let's go ahead and uh, make this little extra step just to make things a little easier to read. Um, let's take this little f times little g, and let's call that uh, big F of x. All right, so we're going to take that and call it big F of x. So then what we really have here is uh, ddx of big F of x. Okay? So just by definition, this is equal to the limit as h goes to 0 of f of x plus h minus big F of x all over h. All right, uh, now what's next? Now let's go ahead and substitute back in terms of uh, little f and little g. So let's come back down here. So this is going to be equal to uh, the limit as h goes to 0 of uh, big F of x is little f of x times g of x, right? So big F of x plus h is going to be uh, little f of x plus h times little g of x plus h. All right. <clears throat> uh, and then minus big F of x, which is uh, just little f of x times little g of x. All over uh, h. All right. So notice this, uh, this is not the same thing as the derivative of f times the derivative of g, right? So we're just kind of stuck with this for now, but uh, what are we going to do with that? Um, well, from here, there are a couple different routes to take. Um, it's actually kind of two different ways of doing the same thing, but uh, let's go ahead and do that. So um, what we're about to do next is kind of a standard trick um, when you're proving things in math. Um, what we're going to do is add something and then subtract that same thing. So basically we're just uh, kind of adding zero. So that might sound kind of goofy, but if you think about it, um, you do similar things uh, all the time when you find common denominators. Um, you know, you want to multiply by something divided by the same thing, right? So for example, just real quick, if you want to do one half minus uh, two thirds, you know, the common denominator is six, right? So you multiply this by two over two, multiply that by three over three. Um, so what you're doing is multiplying by one in a fancy way that's going to be useful to you. So what we're going to do here is add 0 in a fancy way that's useful to us. So let's go ahead and extend this, um, maybe in the same color. And what we're going to do is uh, add f of x times g of x plus h, and then subtract the same thing. So we haven't changed anything because we added and subtracted the same thing, so that's just like adding zero, right? Um, but we just added zero in a fancy way that's useful to us, and uh, we're uh, going to see now how that's going to be useful. So for the next step, we have equals limits as h goes to zero of what do we want to do? Well, let's see. Let's say uh, f of x plus h times g of x plus h. 
let's go ahead and group this with uh, minus f of x times g of x plus h. Let's go ahead and do that. So this is going to be with minus f of x times g of x plus h. All right, and now let's actually go ahead and split this up into two um, fractions. So this will be over h, and then we're going to have uh, plus some other stuff over here. So what's left? Um, these two terms in the middle are left, right? Those are uh, remaining still, because we already used this one. It's here. And we already used this last one. Uh, it's right here. So what we have left is plus uh, plus of this guy. This one has a plus sign in front of it, so let's go ahead and write that one first. <coughs> um, f of x times g of x plus h, and then minus f of x g of x. And then that's all divided by h still, right? Because we're just going to split this guy up into two fractions. All right? So all we really did in this step was just um, we split this up into two fractions, and uh, right before that, we rewrote the order uh, of the top here. So it's this guy minus that, plus that, minus that. Uh, we just rewrote their order, or we changed the order in which we write them, and then we split it up into two fractions. So nothing too crazy yet, uh, except for that first part of adding subtracting, I guess. But anyway, uh, what happens next? So uh, next, what do we got going on? Uh, this is going to be equal to the limit as h goes to 0 of... <clears throat> Alright, so there's a lot of things to consider here, actually. Um, notice there's a common factor... Let's zoom in a little bit. Uh, looking at just this one, there's a common factor of g of x plus h here, right? So let's go ahead and pull that out. Um, so what we're going to have is f of x plus h minus f of x all right, uh, all over h, and then that's being multiplied by uh, times g of x plus h. And we can think of that as g of x plus h over 1. Okay, let's think of it like that. Um, that'll be... because we don't really have to do that, but uh, just for simplicity. Okay, because we want to pull this off of this. So uh, that's that, and then plus the limit as h goes to 0 of what's over here. So first of all, what we're doing, we have a limit of this guy plus this guy. So we're going to rewrite it as a limit of this plus a limit of this. All right. So in other words, we're using the fact that uh, limit of a sum is the sum of the limits. So uh, we're going to do the same kind of thing with this term over here. Uh, but notice over here, the common factor is f of x. So what we have is a common factor of f of x. So let's go ahead and write that as... Uh, f of x over 1, because we want to pull that out. All right. Um, and then what we have left is g of x plus h minus g of x. All right, all divided by this h here. And then these square brackets aren't really necessary that I just put, um, but they're good to have, I guess, just for uh, clarity. All right, anyway, so this is what we have so far. Um, okay, so if you're kind of confused on this step here, think about it going backwards. You know, think... Uh, Think about it kind of going backwards. What would it look like if you started with this bottom row here? And what would it look like if you distributed the g of x plus h through to here? And what would this look like if you distributed the f of x through to here? You would end up with this part, uh, this row right above it up here. All right, so um, this is what we have so far. I guess we could put parentheses around these. Oops. Technically, don't really need them, but uh, like we always say, it's not a bad idea. So now we have this. Um, so we're almost there, actually, but what's next is, uh, let's come back up here. Um, all right, so what we have was uh, equals limit as h goes to zero. So now what we have here is a limit of, zoom in a little bit again, we have limits of uh, this stuff times this stuff. So it's a limit of a product. And we know that uh, limit of a product is the product of the limits, right? That's true just for limits. Um, so we can rewrite this as limit as h goes to 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x all over h times the limit as h goes to 0 of uh, g of x plus h over 1. All right? So we can split this uh, limit up like that. And let's actually do the same thing with uh, this one over here. You know, limit of this guy times that guy. So let's just go ahead and do that. So there's going to be plus uh, limit as h goes to 0 of f of x over 1 times 
limits as h goes to zero of uh, g of x plus h minus g of x all over h. g of x plus h minus g of x all over h. All right. So let's uh, zoom out a little bit. Okay, so let's uh, drop these divided by ones because dividing by one is like doing nothing, right? And remember, we only put that there just to make it more clear um, that we can pull those off the fraction. Okay. But if you're okay with doing that kind of thing, then you know you don't really even have to worry about that. <clears throat> All right. Anyway, um, now we're really close to being done. So what's? Uh, let's just go from left to right. What is this? Uh, limit as h goes to zero of f of x plus h minus f of x divided by h. What is that? That's uh, f prime of x, right? That's f prime of x. What's this? Um, if we take a limit as h goes to zero of g of x plus h, what's that going to be? <clears throat> well, there are some subtle details here. Uh, let's actually come off to the side and look at that. So uh, limit as h goes to zero of g of x plus h. Uh, if g is continuous, we know we can push the limit inside of it. So we know that about limits, right? Uh, limits can be pushed in and pulled out of uh, continuous functions. So we could say g of limits as h goes to 0 of x plus h. And uh, ignoring the g now, uh, limit as h goes to 0 of x plus h, that's just x, right? Because you just do direct substitution. Uh, that's going to be x plus 0, so that's just x. So that's really just going to be g of x. All right? But how do we know um, that we can do that? Well, when we talk about the product rule here, oops, um, we're assuming that g of x is differentiable. Because right? if g of x is not differentiable, then it doesn't really even make sense to say this right here. So um, if g of x is not differentiable, then we just can't really even do this at all. But uh, So what we're going to do is assume that g of x is differentiable. And remember that if you're differentiable, you're continuous. And because you're continuous, you can push the limit inside of uh, the function here. All right? So we can just recap. We're assuming that g of x is differentiable. Otherwise, it doesn't even make sense to talk about any of this. Um, we just can't do it. So because g of x is assumed to be differentiable, that means it must also be continuous, because differentiability implies continuity. And because we have continuity of g, now we can push the limit inside of it, and we end up with that. So that's the, those are the subtle details for that. So this is actually... Uh, just g of x here. Okay. So this, this expression right here is just g of x. All right, then what happens? Plus limit as h goes to 0 of f of x. Uh, this is a little bit simpler now because uh, here it's just f of x, and we're taking a limit as h goes to 0, um, and there's no h's in here at all. Okay, This has nothing to do with h. So uh, as far as the limit is concerned, this is just a constant, and the limit of a constant is just the constant, right? No, yeah, it's, uh, x is a variable, but again, the limit depends on h, so the limit doesn't care what x does. So that's just f of x. And then lastly, uh, we have limit as h goes to 0 of g of x plus h minus g of x, all divided by h, and that's just the definition of the derivative of g. So that's g prime of x. And that's our result. f prime of x times g plus f times g prime of x. So that's a proof of the product rule. Um, so the only really goofy step, I guess, was when we added and subtracted the same thing uh, so that we can add zero in a fancy way that's useful to us. But again, that kind of trick is pretty standard in math. So uh, in the next couple of videos, we'll see some examples of the product rule.